Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to TempleCast. This is episode 55 of our podcast, which we launched back in March at the beginning of the coronavirus lockdown. The lockdown is done, but the pandemic is not. And so we are not done either. We're now a weekly podcast bringing our Temple United Methodist Church community readings and prayers based on the Revised Common Lectionary. I'm Jim Gennati, pastor of Temple United Methodist Church, and this episode includes readings and prayer for Wednesday, September 2nd. We'll begin with this prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Acts, but it needs a little context. This is an account of Paul's first days and months as a disciple of Jesus. Previously, Paul's name had been Saul, and he was a Pharisee in Jerusalem. He launched a persecution of the church, which caused the Jerusalem disciples to scatter to various cities around the region. Paul attempted to take the fight to them. He sought and received permission to go and arrest disciples of Jesus who had fled to Damascus. While on his way there, he was literally knocked off his high horse. In a vision that followed, Paul received the word of the Lord, saying that he was the Lord's chosen missionary to the Gentiles to preach the gospel to them. He was given instructions to go to Damascus and wait for a man who would come and give him another word from God. At the end of the vision, Paul was struck blind. He did as he was told. The prophet found Paul in Damascus and prayed over him. As he did, the Bible tells us that something like scales fell from Paul's eyes, hence the old saying, and Paul's sight was restored, after which Saul was baptized. Presumably, this was when he took the name Paul. Our reading begins immediately after this. It is from Acts chapter 9, verses 19b through 30. After taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately, he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked this name? And has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. After some time had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. But their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night so that they might kill him. But the disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. When he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Our next reading for today comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through your trespasses and sins, in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, 
made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The following prayer is a perfect conclusion to the reading we just heard. It comes from the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow after us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Have you ever taken a road trip in which the whole point was that you didn't know where you were going? Where the only plan was to decide each morning where you were going to go to sleep that night? I've taken two such solo road trips in 2006 and 2007. In each case, I rented a car and drove off not knowing where I would wind up. I did have a vague intention of heading south and west on the first trip, and in fact I wound up seeing the Grand Canyon on that trip. I planned on heading south and west the following year as well, but changed my mind after one day and did west by northwest instead. I wound up seeing Glacier National Park in Montana on that trip. The trips themselves aren't the point. I'm using them only as an example to illustrate something. The reality of every road trip is that it is uncertain. Your plans may be incredibly detailed, but the reality of the trip after the fact may be quite different. Things can change in a moment. That doesn't mean you don't make plans, but it is wise to understand that your plans might get changed, not by your consent or will, but by circumstance. In fact, this is true of any and every plan that we make, no matter how well thought out. As Field Marshal Helmut von Moltke the Elder, Chief of Staff of the Great General Staff of the Prussian Army, famously said, no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. Actually, what he said was, no plan of operations extends with any certainty beyond the first contact with the main hostile force, which isn't quite as pithy. He could have said, no plan of any kind, however well made, survives contact with reality, and he would have been just as correct. But our scripture from Acts does contain a road trip for which there was a plan, so that's what I went with for an example. Paul's road trip plan was to go to Damascus to arrest Christians and bring them back to Jerusalem for trial and probably execution. His destination did not change. He eventually wound up in Damascus, but by the time he got there, his plans were non-existent. They had been erased and not replaced by the Lord Jesus. So great was the change that Saul, who had left Damascus, was a different man now, so different than he took a new name. As Saul, he thought he was doing a good work. He was even doing it for the Lord. But now, as Paul, he realized that the Lord had appointed real good works for the Lord's people to do, and that those works were quite different than the ones Saul had intended. Saul had made his own plans, plans that served his own desire to make a name for himself among his fellow Jews. But now, as Paul, the only plans he would follow would be the Lord's plans, and the only name he would make anything of would be the Lord's name. And the Lord's plans were all about giving grace. The Lord gave grace to Paul and then commanded him to be a vehicle of that grace. I don't know what kind of plans you have. As much as I would love to repeat my 2006 and 2007 style destinationless and planless trips, I'd rather not do it during a pandemic. So maybe someday. How about you? You probably have plans. Maybe not a planless road trip, but you probably have plans, goals, things you not only want to do, but are making plans to actually do. Is grace giving part of your plan? It can be part of whatever plan you hatch. In fact, the reading from Romans makes it sound like grace giving should be the main aim of our plan, regardless of what else is included. Wherever we plan on going, whatever we plan on doing on the way or when we get there, 
However those plans might come to pass or be revised, the one thing that remains constant is God's desire that we be grace givers. We're on a grace giving road trip, regardless of the road that we're on. Thank you for listening. If you've taken a favorite road trip or any kind of trip, I'd love to hear about it in the comments on Facebook. If you'd rather tell me about it via email, I'd still love to hear it. Email us at templeumc at comcast.net. I won't share anything from your email in the podcast unless you specifically ask me to do so. We'll be back in your earbuds or speakers or home speakers in a week. Until then, grace and peace to all.